Hello and welcome to Pseudocode. In this video, we are going to talk about how to organize and categorize different design patterns. Before we understand different types of design patterns, I want to highlight a point that please understand that design patterns are actually thumb rules or different concepts using which you can solve the problem of modeling real world problem into object oriented design. This does not mean that any design pattern that we are going to talk about is applicable to one language or other languages. Every design pattern has different implementation as per languages and in reality design patterns are actually agnostic to languages. Those are just concepts and principles and every language has different way of implementing them. We are going to use one of the object oriented languages to understand how to implement different design patterns. In order to understand a particular design pattern in any of the other languages that we might not cover, it would be sufficient for you to understand the basic definition and concept behind a design pattern and then just looking at the example of how the pattern is implemented in the language that you are working on would make you comfortable enough to work with it. Now let's talk about the organization and different types of design patterns. <laughs> Since design patterns solve the problem of how you're going to organize your classes and objects and their behavior and their communication between each other, we can actually break design patterns in terms of those categories. So the first criteria on which we divide different design patterns is the purpose. What is the purpose any design pattern solves? Now, there can be three purposes that any design pattern would be solving. First is creational purpose. Whenever you want to create classes or objects or instantiate objects of classes, there comes the creational design patterns. And different design patterns which come under creational category are described here. Next category is the structural category. And that's why those are called structural design patterns. When we talk about structure, that means how we are going to structure more than one classes and objects along with each other. It includes different uh, different ways in which we can use inheritance. It will also touch upon the interface segregation principle that we have discussed. How do we design our interfaces? So all those structuring that we do around objects and classes, those patterns solving such kind of structural problems fall under the structural patterns and the patterns which follow under structural category are here. And the final uh, criteria is the behavior. Once we are done instantiating the objects and classes and once we are done structuring them uh, in relation to each other, the last part that any object oriented code solves is actually those objects and classes communicate with each other. They pass messages to each other in order to fulfill a complex business use case or in order to fulfill a use case like saving the data or fetching data etc. That behavior is actually solved using the patterns which uh, we categorize as behavioral patterns which you can see here. Now there is also a way to categorize these patterns on the basis of classes and objects. There are some patterns which will be applicable only on objects and there are some patterns which will be applicable only on classes. Actually mostly all the patterns work on objects. There are only four or five patterns as you can see here in the list that are applied on classes. Rest all the patterns are actually applied on the objects. Now, why we are dividing these uh, patterns uh, on the basis of uh, objects and classes? Here is why. If you look at the creational patterns which cater to class, that means those patterns are actually uh, telling you how to create classes. If you talk about creational pattern, patterns uh, categorized under objects, those patterns are actually telling you how to instantiate objects for different classes. Similarly, the structural uh, patterns that we have categorized under classes and objects, the structural class patterns actually tell you how to use inheritance and the structural object pattern actually try to tell you how to uh, organize and assemble your objects. Similarly, behavioral patterns, the behavioral class patterns actually tell you how to use inheritance in order to implement the algorithms and the control and flow of uh, classes so as to fulfill a certain behavior and behavioral object uh, patterns actually tell you how to assemble and how to write algorithms around objects in order to fulfill the task which one single object cannot uh, fulfill. So basically if there are multiple objects that are included to fulfill a certain behavior, the, pat the behavioral patterns pertaining to objects solve those kind of problems. 
the reason that we are discussing this organization of uh, different patterns is because now when we are going to actually study a pattern i am going to use terms like uh, this is a creational pattern or this is a structural pattern or this is a behavioral pattern this is a class pattern or this is an object pattern just uh, if you understand this uh, structure that we have discussed today when we are going to address different patterns as structural or creational patterns or structural class patterns you would be able to understand what exactly i mean by that and also you would be able to create a mental map of this categorization so it would be easy for you to look at a pattern and understand what kind of problem this pattern might be solving it is not a memorizing technique but it is just a technique to ease you uh, into the process of learning design patterns now to summarize before we actually start picking each pattern and write code and understand code for each pattern i want to highlight certain points there are roughly around 20 to 25 patterns there can be more patterns upcoming with new tech uh, with new technology and new languages please try to understand that you will not be able to memorize all 20 25 patterns by heart and also you are not going to use all 25 patterns in even a single year of coding there are some patterns if you think about the 80 20 rule there are 20% of the patterns that you are going to use 80% of the time and remaining 80% of the patterns you might be using uh, may or may not, may not be using uh, in your uh, journey so what i would like to highlight is try to learn each pattern try to understand each pattern try to solve one or two problems with respect to every pattern and always remember whenever you have to solve a problem you should be able to go figure out which pattern would solve this problem and apply it it is not necessary for you to know each and every pattern it is only necessary for you to identify the problem identify the pattern and map the problem and pattern that is only thing which is required from uh, any uh, junior developer or senior developer or any developer nobody expects you to remember all these things the only expectation is you should be able to solve the problem in a right way so keep this in mind while learning the patterns and i hope that you don't get overwhelmed by a series of so many patterns so that was a brief introduction of different types of patterns and uh, how you can learn patterns from the next video onwards we are going to dig deep into every pattern using some examples and we will see what problems those patterns solve if you have any doubt with respect to this video or if you have any other questions please feel free to add them in comments i have added different resources uh, for this uh, uh, video please check the description those are linked in the description in the next video we'll discuss factory patterns till then take care see you in the next video